Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for September 19th, 2017. This week's topic, beware of parabolic trends. That plus my regular weekly market analysis and the trade of the week on Ballard Power. When stocks or markets are moving up quickly and they run up and away from their upward trend line, investors are really showing emotion. It's that fear of missing out that causes investors to chase stocks higher in an exponential way. These parabolic shaped trends usually end with a pullback to the trend line. And that means it's important to not chase stocks that are running away from the trend line. Consider them when they come back to the trend line. And when I look at the trade of the week for this week, we'll discuss that. But before we do that, let's do our regular weekly market analysis. I'm just going to uh, bring out my pen tool here. And this of course is the 30 day, 60 minute chart on the S&P 500. And you can see that we've got an upward sloping channel here that's been building for the last few weeks. We had some long-term resistance there. We broke out and had very low volatility. And then on Friday, a pullback, which brought it back to this upward trend line. And so far it has held that. However, if we were to break down through it, that would indicate that prices are going to head lower. So be cautious for that. What is most likely to happen because the market has upward momentum is most likely price will continue higher, but we have to watch very closely next week to make sure that this short-term upward trend line remains in place. Now, looking at the long-term trend, you can see that we remain up, nice uh, narrow upward sloping channel there. And then of course the longer term trend line like that, we flirted with it back in that area there, but for now the buyers are well in control of the market and until that changes until we get breaks of these trend lines you should remain a bull on u.s stocks on the russell 2000 we've got a very different picture a market that is decidedly complacent and not too interested in the uh, small cap sector now we've had a little bit of strength the last few weeks but it's coming into this resistance zone where i expect prices will get stuck so we may see a little bit of more of a move in the next week or two and then expect it to stall if we can break out to new highs, if we can build some volume, we haven't had any, look at when back in this zone, how we had that kick up in volume, we've got very mundane volume here on the small cap stocks. And so generally speaking, I think that it's an area to be avoided, but there are starting to show some pockets of strength in the group. And so you might wanna take a nibble of it, but be slow on that. Moving along to the TSX 60, the again, the 30 day, 60 minute chart, you can see we were in a downward trend and we've broken that this week. We've started to build some rising bottoms. So there's starting to be some optimism building in the Canadian market in the short term. There's still lots of resistance that this market is going to deal with in the short term. So don't expect it to go rocketing higher, but it is a positive step. Moving over to the longer term chart, there was the upward trend. It was broken. Now we're in a downward trend until that downward trend line is broken. I would remain relatively pessimistic on Canadian stocks. TSX Venture, well, there's been a little strength in gold, maybe a little bit of a resurgence in the oil sector, and we're starting to see some rising bottoms build. However, lots of resistance to deal with. And so I think it's a slow trickle higher at best. We don't see a lot of excitement. That may start come October when the traditionally strong season for these types of stocks arrives, typically sometime in October, perhaps November, running until the spring, perhaps May. So that's what we want to watch for. Is this building some stability and then gearing up for a run in the fall? On the treasury bond side, you can see that we are in an upward trend, upward sloping channel. That means interest rates slowly going down. We've come back to the bottom of the channel right there, and that should resolve with an upward move in the next um, week or so. If it breaks down through this trend line, then I would be worried that interest rates are going higher, but it has not happened yet. The trend line is intact and so remain bullish on bond prices, which means interest rates falling in the near term. Off to the US dollar and those low interest rates and uh, general strength around the globe is hurting the US dollar. You can see that we've been in a downward trend for some time. There is the downward sloping channel. We remain in that until you get a break of the trend line, remain a bear on the US dollar. Gold is being helped by that weakness in the US dollar, but 
really not proportionate to how weak the US dollar has been. Gold, you would think, would have done a lot better during that period. Yes, it's higher, but it's not significantly higher. And we saw some weakness this week as we're coming into this resistance area. Even though North Korea was acting up again, the market didn't really look for safety. Now, this short-term upward trend line is still in place, and so we should see a bounce off of that, but no guarantee of that. We may just simply go sideways for a little while or possibly even break that upward trend line. So I, I think the trend is up, but it's facing a lot, of, uh, a lot of challenges right now. And so I'd be pretty cautious with the gold sector until it can break out to some uh, highs through that longer term resistance. On the oil market, hey, we've built a rising bottom and we're starting to try to get through this downward trend line. You could argue that we did that this week right there is a little bit of a jump but um, again resistance here resistance here resistance here like many of the things we've talked about these things are trying to turn around but they've got a lot of resistance lines to work through that means it takes time to build optimism so looking better but still has work to do finally on the fear index you can see that we have gone through this support and we're even through this support, that's largely because of the time value decay of this ETF, the VIX ETF VXX, loses value over time. It's probably at the same level as it was back here, perhaps a little bit higher even, but because of the time value decay, the VXX is sitting at lower prices. Long and the short of it is, there's not a lot of fear in the market. So US stocks bullish on both time frames. Canadian bearish long-term, neutral short-term, that's an upgrade. Gold neutral long-term because of that long-term resistance, but it is in an upward trend on the short-term chart. Oil neutral, it's been sideways for some time on that long-term chart, and I've upgraded it to neutral because it is trying to break that short-term downward trend line. The long-term trend in U.S. stocks remains up, but money is rotating into beat-up sectors like energy and retail, which must still fight an uphill battle. Canadian stocks are stabilizing, but have work to do to break that downward trend. Oil slowly building optimism and gold getting stuck at resistance. Fear is low. All right, let's look at the trade of the week on Ballard Power. Now, this was a great day trader on a day like that. But one thing I want to highlight is the action candles that are here and here and here because they really point to the strength that came here. And this is where the trend went parabolic. Here's your trend line. And look at how the market ran up and away from the trend. And that is the time when it is risky because investors are emotional. They're chasing prices higher. And typically you see a follow back down to the trend line. And that's what's happening now in Ballard Power. Big day on Wednesday. And then you're starting to see the pullback near term. So be cautious with Ballard Power on that pullback. But consider it once it gets back to that upward trend line. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for September 19th, 2017. Hope you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Stock Scores channel for instant alerts when new videos are uploaded. And as always, trade well.